So we have, we have several instances where uh, a Vectra DA test has helped us guide uh, treatment. And I can think of one particular patient, a middle-aged uh, female patient with seropositive rheumatoid arthritis who uh, was on an oral uh, disease-modifying medication. and um, She felt she was doing rather well. Uh, we, on physical exam, noticed some inflammation in her joints, and we somewhat disagreed with her assessment. Uh, upon getting the Vectra test, we noticed it was a high-moderate score, almost high. And we used this to facilitate a discussion as to, number one, are you taking your medication because we noticed that your physical exam doesn't really jive with how you're telling us you're feeling. And, and uh, she reported to us that she was. And uh, we went on to say, well, based on what we see at this point, we really feel like we need to either add another medication um, or change the medication. And uh, initially, it was uh, not as high as it was on this particular visit. So the, the increase in this Vectra to the high moderate range, our physical findings, uh, helped her make a decision to go on a different medication uh, so that we could treat her more effectively and more aggressively. Uh, one was a patient with seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, was on methotrexate and a TNF blocker, and yet she continued to complain over and over of pain in her hands and also in her upper back. And so she, she got a Vectra, it was 17, which actually confirmed what I thought, not what the patient thought, but what I thought. And in fact, I was actually able to taper her down and off her TNF blocker. Uh, I had a patient who uh, had a new diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and um, was uh, treated initially and managed quite well with methotrexate, achieving, uh, based on clinical parameters, as well as a Vectra DA result, uh, remission. Um, and uh, very much like most patients, especially with early diagnoses of rheumatoid arthritis, uh, wanted to minimize her exposure to medications, in this case methotrexate, even though she had been tolerating it well without side effects and or any toxicity. We said okay, uh, because she actually had been um, almost a year, a little less than a year on methotrexate, and we reduced the dose, uh, and she continued to do well. And uh, she wondered uh, at a subsequent appointment whether we can just stop the methotrexate completely, um, asking, I think, a very natural question, which I probably would have asked, is how do you know the methotrexate's working if I don't have any symptoms? Um, and so I, I said, rather than stop it, why don't we do another vector to see what the status of your arthritis is, despite you having no symptoms? And in fact, her vector DA had increased from uh, the low 20s, where it had been when she was on full dose methotrexate, and uh, had increased to the low 30s, so about by 10 points. And based on that, I cautioned her that um, if we do stop the methotrexate completely, um, you might flare because I believe that um, sort of you know the the, the vector trending in the wrong direction with it going up is probably predictive of, of a future flare. Um, she decided because she was feeling well and just wanted to give it a try uh, to stop the methotrexate completely. She did, and lo and behold, it didn't take more than three or four weeks before she called um, having symptoms and really gave me um, an opportunity to say, I told you so.